Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Call Halayim, La Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Barakatha. All right. <clears throat> so this is just uh, an example of the crafty counsel that you can find in the scriptures. All right. This is the book of Judith, chapter seven and verse eight. Now, here's some background. OK, a law for knees, I believe he was the chief of the Assyrian army. Hold on real quick. Let me see. I believe uh, Alophernes was a chief of the Assyrian army coming up against. No, no, no. He was he was the chief of the the um, the Babylonian army. OK, and um, he was the chief of Nebuchadnezzar's host, I guess the uh, general. Right. And I haven't read the book of Judith in a little while. And basically, he was coming up against the children of Israel to conquer them. And the Lord delivered the children of Israel by Judith. All right. So this is the example of the crafty counsel that was taken. Okay. And, and how the nations plan and plot on our downfall. It says, then came unto him, Judith chapter 7 and verse 8. It says, then came unto him all the chief of the children of Esau and all the governors of the people of Moab and the captains of the sea coast, and said, let our Lord now hear a word that there be not an overthrow in thine army. Right. So these is the these is the the, the, the Edomites, white people conspiring with the Ammonites, which are the so-called Chinese. All right. And they're conspiring with the captains of the sea coast, which I'm going to assume you, you get me uh, uh, Japhites because we know the Japhites are a seafaring people, something like that. OK, right. So these, this is crafty counsel that the nations are taking to overthrow the Israelites. All right. Let's go to verse 10. It says for this people of the children of Israel do not trust in their spears, but in the height of the mountains wherein they dwell, because it is not easy to come up to the tops of their mountains. So the Lord set us in a place where it wasn't easy to go to war with us. All right, because our land was set upon hills, the hill country of Jerusalem. All right, so they have to take crafty counsel on how to overthrow us. Right, it says now therefore, my lord, fight not against them in battle array, and there, fight not against them in battle array, and there shall not so much as one man of thy people perish, because the Israelites they had been living there for so long, we had already developed strategies, you know, counter war strategies to take them heathens down. We had already developed counter war strategies to take the heathens down if they came against us. It was a strategy that we had to fight in our land. All right. It says, remain in thy camp and keep all the men of thine army and let thy servants get into their hands the fountain of water, which issueth forth out of the foot of the mountain. For all the inhabitants of Bethuselah have their water thence. So shall thirst kill them and they shall give up their city and we and our people shall go up to the tops of the mountains that are near and will camp upon them to watch that none go out of the city. Now, the reason why I brought this up is because through the spirit, that's the same thing that they did to us. OK, and well, they did it. This, of course, they was doing this to us, but through the spirit, that's what they're doing to us. Now, they cut off the waters, the living water, our understanding of the truth. OK, and they can go up into the mountain and overthrow us. You know, we're overthrown, you know, because they our, our water supply is tainted. It's confusion in the earth. You know, you pick up a Bible and, and you wonder why so many religions are associated with one book. You know, um, um, confusion, Islam, Christianity, Catholicism, Baptist, you know, uh, uh, Mormons. They all have their their take on the Bible and that casts people into confusion because the Israelites got the truth. All right. And and and, and all of that, the midst of all of that confusion, they're able to overtake us because the waters are cut off. All right. So we can't stand as a nation of people because so many of our brothers are confused. That's why we're in the great war of ignorance. All right. Let, let me go to that great war of ignorance. I believe that's in wisdom of Solomon. Um, bear with me for a second, but yeah, man, you know, that's what Esau did. You know, he cut the waters off because he knew that if the Lord was with us, they couldn't overthrow us because the scriptures tell you in Judith, the fifth chapter that, um, if there be no error in his people, let my Lord now pass by 
you know, unless they're overthrown. Because if the God that hated, so so even the heathen knew, if the God that hated iniquity stood with us, that um, that we couldn't be overthrown until we sinned against the Most High, then we could be overthrown. So let's see. Let's see where that precept is at. That the Great War of Ignorance should be in fourteen and. Uh, here we go. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 20. It says, it said, verse 22, it says, moreover, this was not enough for them that they erred in the knowledge of God, but whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance, those, those so great plagues called they peace. So, so for whilst they slew their children in sacrifices or used secret ceremonies and made revelings of strange rites, they kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. But either one slew another traitorously or grievous or grieved him by adultery so that there reigned in all men without exception, blood, manslaughter, theft, dissimulation, corruption, unfaithfulness, tumults, perjury. Okay. Per, 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 it says it's perjury. Right. Disquieting of good men, forgetfulness of of good turns, defiling of souls, changing of kind. OK, disorder in marriages, adultery and shameless uncleanness. So that's telling you right there. All these things happen. OK, disquieting. It says it says their reign without exception. Right. So their reign exceedingly blood, manslaughter, theft. You know what I'm saying? Dissimulation. That's arguing and fighting. You know, manslaughter. Is putting somebody to death, theft is stealing stuff, you know, tumults, which is fighting, perjury, okay, stealing people's identities and stealing people's stuff and perjury, faking, you know, disquieting of good men, forgetfulness of 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 good turns, all right, uh, which meaning that if somebody do something good for you, you know, you 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 forget that, you know, to, to stab them in the back. All right. It says defiling of souls, changing of kind. That's talking about the changing of kind is talking about transgenderism. All right. Because it says here changing of kind or sex. OK, so to change your sex, you know that that means transgenderism. All right. Disorder in marriages, adultery and shameless uncleanness. So that's telling you right there that all of that is what reigns in men at this time. All right. And we live in a great war of ignorance because nobody knows, uh, you know, nobody knows the truth that the father put out there for us. All right. So we fight. And that's why Yahweh Shai said that our weapons were not carnal. You understand? That's why the Lord already said, told us, you know, he, he told Peter, put your sword back in your sheath, man. We're not fighting against that. That's why Paul tells you it's mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. I believe it was Paul who told you that it was mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. The stronghold, you get what I'm saying, is Christianity, idolatry, all right? Islam, you know? You ever talk to an Islamic brother? Not even brother. That, them, any brother that's not, any, any Israelite that's not in the truth is not to be counted as your brother necessarily, okay? So, now... What I meant by what I meant to say, Salakia, what I meant to say was <clears throat> you ever talk to an Israelite that deals with Islam? OK, because if you talk to an Israelite that deal with Islam, they're earnestly convinced that the prophet Muhammad is in the Bible. They tell you that Farrakhan says that we the people of the book, but that the prophet Muhammad is in the Bible and they tell you that Yahweh Shai did not die on the cross for our sins. All right. And they're earnestly convinced of that. You get what I'm saying? I, I heard a tale of, of an Islam Israelite talking about that Yahweh Shai faked his death and had somebody else die in his place. That's not what the scriptures say, but that's what Islam goes out of their way to try to say that our savior, Yahweh Shai, I mean, because think about it. If Yahweh Shai didn't do what he did, we'd all be dead right now. Okay? Every one of us, we would have been killed in the letter of the law. The Lord would have brought 10 times plagues upon us. The scriptures say that the Lord saw the condition of the world and spared it greatly in the book of 2nd Esdras. All right? 
So with that being said, it's just that those brothers are wrong. Or or, or if you ever talk to a to a, a Christian Israelite, you get what I'm saying? They they so earnestly believe that the rapture is gonna take place and that all men are gonna be kicking back, drinking, you know, Tropicana juice with ice in it in the kingdom of heaven. Everybody just gonna be kicking it, you know, as if the kingdom of heaven is something that you obtain after you live and when you die then you obtain the kingdom of heaven that's wickedness man they believe that you can commit adultery and fornication and then just and you'll be all right you know you can keep doing that paul already told you let me, let me go to this in galatians the second chapter let's explain what yeah you know i'm saying if you commit adultery you have to repent of that and we're going to explain how that works well I'm not going to explain anything. The precept is going to explain it. This is the book of Galatians chapter 2 and verse 21. It says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ died in vain. Right? So you're not gaining your righteousness. You're not gaining any righteousness by keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. You're just rehearsing the righteous acts like it says to do in Judges 5 and 11. Our justification to the Father is Yahweh Shai. And when he died on the cross, because we can't keep the law, statutes, and commandment perfectly, but we try to. But what did Paul say to let you know that you have to earnestly try to keep the commandments? He said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. He would be frustrating the grace of God if he blatantly went against what the Most High told him to do. You get what I'm saying? He would be saying, he would, that, that if Paul was saying that you wasn't supposed to try to keep the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability, if he wasn't saying that, then... He will blatantly eat pork. What would be the point of him preaching the word? You get what I'm saying? If Paul was ever, if Paul ever said you didn't have to keep no laws. See, Christians, Christian, Christian Israelites, all right, they want to say that you can have the scriptures without no law. If you don't have no law, then that makes you lawless. The scriptures say that the law was made for the lawless. All right. So if the law was made for the lawless and men live as brute beasts. Then they need to stop living as beasts and start living as, as, as you know what I'm saying, civilized by the law, statutes, and commandments of the Bible. All right. It says, do we make void the law through our faith? Christians totally ignore that verse or, or the book of James. I believe it's the second chapter, first chapter where it tells you, I will show you my faith by my works. OK, can faith without works save you being alone? No, it cannot. If you talk to Christian Israelites, that'll go all over their head, you know, or, or, or when the Lord says in Amos chapter, uh, what is it? Two and verse three. Let's go to that. Let's go to Amos chapter two and verse three. Another scripture. Uh, Christians blatantly ignore the entirety of the Old Testament. OK, let, let's go to Amos chapter three and verse two. So look, that's what I meant. Right. It says. Verse, verse one, it says, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Right. So you can partner that with, with Isaiah 40 and 15. And you can partner that with 2nd Ezra 6 and 54 down. I believe you can you can you can precept that with those to, to get the bigger picture. The point is that the Lord said all men weren't going to dwell together. But then Christians want to jump to the most famous verse in the Bible by American standards, which is John 3 and 16. All right. That's the great. All of this is the great war of ignorance. OK, that's why we're working to pull down the strongholds. The precepts are here. We got all of the ammunition we need in these words. All right. To tear down these strongholds. But you got to realize it's if the Lord ultimately it's the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. All right. If it seems good for a Christian Israelite to come out of being a Christian and come into being a brother or, or a Christian Israelite woman to come out of being a Christian to being a sister. You get what I'm saying? If it's for that, if it's for them. Then the Lord will make it to where they understand the words of this book and accept it. The scriptures say their fear of me is taught by the doctrine of men. 
all right? So my point is, the whole reason I made this video was just to show you some examples of the great war of ignorance that we live in, you know? And that great war is because of the book of Judith. They cut our waters off, all right? And we became the Valley of Dry Bones, okay? Because they, 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 they decided they want to cut our waters off and keep us in a destroyed, starving position. The scriptures say you shall go to your enemies in one of all things, okay? So we're starving if we don't got Esau's word or we don't got Esau's things, okay? We built the dependence upon them as if they were our father, all right? And we know that the Most High, the Father of all things, we know that he is our father. The Lord just said that he only knew us. He rained down manna from heaven for our sakes. He had Moses lift up the serpent for our sakes, okay? So with that, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High. In the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, I'm going to say Shalom to the twelve.